This is Brad with the Daily Disney Blog, your source for all things Disney and a how-to guide to Walt Disney World. Welcome to my YouTube channel, and this channel is going to be dedicated to more of the trip planning stuff, because I know on my podcast I like to do news and that kind of thing, and kind of talk about the history of the Disney parks, but this, I feel like, is a more entertaining way for you guys to get a little bit more information on how to use your time at the parks a little bit better, and uh, have some fun while you watch this. So this is the top 10 breakfast at Walt Disney World. Number 10, we have the Starbucks on Main Street, which was formerly the Main Street Bakery. Absolutely fantastic if you're looking for something short on the go. I had to put this one on the list because I feel like it is it is that. It's perfect for on the go. If you're trying to do something a little more sit down, well, just hang tight because the rest of these are for you. But this is a good one for somebody who wants to go grab a coffee and a pastry and just kind of move on with their day. Doesn't want to make a big deal. Or somebody who doesn't really like breakfast all that much. So I feel like I had to put that one on the list. Number nine is Cinderella's Royal Table. And this is a character dining experience with Snow White, Ariel, Cinderella, and Aurora. And uh, the food is pretty decent. They uh, it's It's very, very expensive for what you do get. Um, just a heads up, if you do plan on booking this, it is really hard to get into because of the popularity of the Disney princesses, like we all know. And um, I feel like you could probably use that money towards a different experience um, that would probably suit you a little bit better if you weren't going with kids. Because uh, it is rather expensive, but it had to make the list because it is just a cool atmosphere. And where else can you eat in Cinderella's castle? Come on, it's awesome. Number eight is a little bit out of the way. At Fort Wilderness, we have Trails End. This one is one I like to go to after a few days of the parks where you kind of want to break from everybody. Um, it is at, because it's out of the way. And uh, it does take a while to navigate to there and to get back to the park. So if you do book this one, make sure that you are okay with spending quite a while out there because it is kind of far. Um, food is awesome. Uh, kind of southern feeling, kind of like home cooking type stuff. Fantastic. Uh, if you've never tried Trails In, give it a try, but just be aware that it is kind of out of the way. Number seven, we're going to go over to the Polynesian Resort with Kona Cafe. Two words, Tonga Toast. That's all you need to know. Fantastic. If you've never tried the Tonga Toast at Kona Cafe, that alone is worth going there for. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive to eat there for breakfast, and if you can't get into Ohana, it's a good second second place. Uh, number six, we have 1900 Park Fair over at the Grand Floridian, and this is another uh, character dining experience, and this one has Mary Poppins, Alice, the Mad Hatter, Tigger, and Pooh. 1900 Park Fair is, uh, like I said, at the Grand Floridian, so it's a little more kind of, I don't want to use the word stuffy, but it definitely doesn't feel like a theme park, which, you know, is if you're going for something like that, then I think that's going to be a good one. Uh, I have not eaten here, just a, just a heads up, I, so I can't review the food, but I am actually going on my next trip, so I might have to edit this list out. But this is not just my opinion, this is what I've done research on and that kind of thing. So uh, everything else is my opinion, but this one consistently made... So it made sense to put it on here, so I had to do it. Number five at the at the sorry at the Contemporary Resort, uh, Chef Mickey's, which is awesome just for the sheer fact that they have a ton of variety in their food. Um, it's great. This is one of the more expansive buffets. They have a lot of stuff to offer, um, and it's a character dining experience. And you're in the Contemporary, so you can zip right over to the Magic Kingdom or to Epcot really easily from your from your breakfast. So I think this one do you absolutely deserves a spot on the top 10 breakfasts at Walt Disney World. Moving on, number four, the Crystal Palace, another character breakfast uh, with Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, Piglet. Uh, this one has one of my favorite things at all of Walt Disney World to eat, so it's kind of actually shocking that I ranked this number four. Um, the puffed French toast, I'm not kidding. I will I will seriously book a breakfast just to go eat a plate of the, the puffed French toast. It's just like, in between like a donut and a I guess French toast, but it's like it's covered in powder, not powder sugar, like covered in sugar, and it's just, it's incredible, it's mind-blowing. It, that alone, to me, is worth the price. Again, this one's a little more expensive, but you have a great view of the castle, because you are at the Crystal Palace right at the end of Main Street there on the left, and uh, definitely worth, definitely, definitely, definitely worth doing if you've never done it before. Moving on, number three, the Cape May Cafe at the Disney Beach Club. Now, this one's a fun one because it's a little bit out of the way. Um, it's another character dining experience. The buffet is just as diverse as Chef Mickey's, but I feel like the food's a little bit better. Um, and this one, you have Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy, but they're dressed in, like, beach attire, which is really cool. Uh, 
take some time because this this is one of those big ones where you can you can stay a while and eat um, a bunch of different stuff. They have everything from Mickey waffles and bacon to yogurts, like a yogurt spot. Um, tons of fresh fruit. It was it was awesome. Highly recommend Cape May Cafe. Uh, number two, Ohana at the Polynesian Village Resort. Another character breakfast. Uh, they have Lilo, Stitch, Pluto, and Mickey. And uh, this the breakfast is actually famous for the pog juice, which is shortened for the ingredients of the juice: uh, passion fruit juice, uh, orange, and guava juice. And this barely beat out my puff French toast for my favorite. This is my favorite drink on property, with the exception of Lafouze Brew, because uh, I really love Lafouze Brew. Um, but this one is a great overall experience, and I ranked this one higher up, and the reason I did that was because it's more of an interactive experience, not just the characters kind of come by and sign your book and pat your kid on the head and then they move on. They have like a parade every few minutes where your kids can get up and interact with, with Lilo, Stitch, and uh, have some fun, and my son loves Stitch, so it always ranks high for me. But we are headed now to number one. And my favorite breakfast at all of Walt Disney World is not a character experience, and it's not in any of the parks. It is number one at the Wilderness Lodge Whispering Canyon Cafe. I absolutely love this place. I We ate there twice on our honeymoon, back-to-back uh, -back days. It's filling. The food is fantastic. I know a lot of people might be upset at me for putting Whispering Canyon in, and uh putting it number one on my list but guess what it's my list so if you don't like it you can make your own list and put whatever you want for your number one but I feel like you get a different experience here than you get anywhere else on property with breakfast because it's not a character dining where you have characters coming over but your servers are absolutely characters and uh, to put this one high up would not put it high up would just be a travesty so I feel like number one for me is Whispering Canyon Cafe we go every time we go and uh, if you've never been make sure that you ask for ketchup. That's all I'm going to say. So uh, that is the first episode of this new show that I'm doing. Um, please hit subscribe and like it if you liked the video. Um, if I missed one that's pretty obvious, make sure you put it down in the comment section. Um, and again, this is not a definitive list. This is just something that I think is a good basis to go on if you're planning a trip to Walt Disney World. So that being said, thank you guys so much for listening and have a magical day. We'll see you on uh, the podcast.